animals that yield wool. Dear kids, we all know that wool and silk are obtained from animals. Wool is obtained from the fleece of sheep or yak. Silk fiber come from cocoons of the silk moth. Wool comes from sheep, goat, yak and some other animals. These wool yielding animals bear hair on their body. These animals have a thick coat of hair. Hair traps a lot of air. Air is a poor conductor of heat, so hair keeps these animals warm. Wool is derived from these hairs. The hairy skin of the sheep has two types of fibers that form its fleece the coarse beard hair and the fine soft under hair close to the skin. The fine hair provides the fibers for making wool. Some breeds of sheep possess only fine under hair. Their parents are specially chosen to give birth to sheep which have only soft under hair. This process of selecting parents for obtaining special characters in their offspring such as soft under hair in sheep is termed selective breeding. Several breeds of sheep are found in different parts of our country. However, the fleece of sheep is not the only source of wool. Wool of yak is common in Tibet and Ladakh. Angora wool is obtained from Angora goats. Found in hilly regions such as Jammu and Kashmir. Wool is also obtained from goat hair. The under fur of Kashmiri goat is soft. It is woven into fine shawls called Pashmina shawls. The fur on the body of camels is also used as wool. Lama and alpaca found in South America also yield wool. For obtaining wool, sheep are reared. Their hair is cut and processed into wool. Sheep are herbivores and prefer grass and leaves. Apart from grazing sheep, rearers also feed them on a mixture of pulses, corn, jawar, oil cakes and minerals. In winter, sheep are kept indoors and fed on leaves, grain and dry fodder. Sheep are reared in many parts of our country for wool. Certain breeds of sheep have thick coat of hair on their body which yields good quality wool in large quantities. As mentioned earlier, these sheep are selectively bred with one parent being a sheep of good breed. Once the reared sheep have developed a thick growth of hair, hair is shaved off for getting wool. Processing of Fibers into Wool Step 1. The fleece of the sheep along with a thin layer of skin is removed from its body. This process is called shearing. Machines similar to those used by barbers are used to shave off hair. Usually hair are removed during the hot weather. This enables sheep to survive without their protective coat of hair. The hair provide woolen fibers. Woolen fibers 
are then processed to obtain woolen yarn. Shearing does not hurt the sheep. Just as it does not hurt when you get a haircut or your father shaves his beard. The uppermost layer of the skin is dead. Also, the hair of sheep grow again just as your hair does. Step 2. The sheared skin with hair is thoroughly washed in tanks to remove grease, dust and dirt. This is called scoring. Nowadays, scoring is done by machines. Step 3. After scoring, sorting is done. The hairy skin is sent to a factory where hair of different textures are separated or sorted. Step 4. The small fluffy fibers called burrs are picked out from the hair. These are the same burrs which sometimes appear on your sweaters. The fibers are scored again and dried. This is the wool ready to be drawn into fibers. Step 5. The fibers can be dyed in various colors as the natural fleece of sheep and goats is black, brown or white. Step 6. The fibers are straightened, combed and rolled into yarn. The longer fibers are made into wool for sweaters and the shorter fibers are spun and woven into woolen cloth. Silk Silk fibers are also considered as animal fibers. Silk worms spin the silk fibers. The rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk is called sericulture. Before we discuss the process of obtaining silk, it is necessary to know the interesting life history of the silk moth. For obtaining silk, moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads. Rearing Silk Worms A female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. The eggs are stored carefully on strips of cloth or paper and sold to silk worm farmers. The farmers keep eggs under hygienic conditions and under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity. The eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch from eggs. This is done when mulberry trees bear a fresh crop of leaves. The larvae called caterpillars or silkworms eat day and night and increase enormously in size. The larvae are kept in clean bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves. After 25 to 30 days, the caterpillars stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin cocoons. Small racks or twigs may be provided in the trays to which cocoons get attached. The caterpillar or silkworm spins the cocoon inside which develops the silk moth. A pile of cocoons is used for obtaining silk fibers. The cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam. The silk fibers separate out. The process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk. Reeling is done in special machines which unwind the threads or fibers of silk from the cocoon. Silk fibers 
are then spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth by weavers. Life Cycle of a Silk Moth The female silk moth lays eggs from which hatch larvae which are called caterpillars or silk worms. They grow in size and when the caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its life cycle called pupa, it first weaves a net to hold itself. Then it swings its head from side to side in the form of the figure of 8. During these movements of the head, the caterpillar secretes fiber made of a protein which hardens on exposure to air and forms silk fiber. Soon, the caterpillar completely covers itself by silk fibers and turns into pupa. This covering is known as cocoon. The further development of the pupa into moth continues inside the cocoon. Silk fibers are used for weaving silk cloth. Soft silk yarn is as strong as a comparable thread of steel. The silk yarn thread is obtained from the cocoon of the silk moth. There is a variety of silk moths which look very different from one another and the silk yarn they yield is different in texture, coarse, smooth, shiny etc. Thus, Tusser silk, Muga silk, Posa silk etc. are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths. The most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. The silk fiber from the cocoon of this moth is soft, lustrous and elastic and can be dyed in beautiful colors. Sericulture or culture of silk worms is a very old occupation in India. India produces plenty of silk on a commercial scale.